Hey everybody, um, we've had a couple requests on, to do a video on how we pack our stuff to go to a race. Um, so today I'm going to show you how I pack my bags for a 10th scale electric race. Um, first off, what we found um, for a carry-on, I always carry my cars on and then like a, just a day's worth of clothes. Just in case our bags get lost, we can get there and have a change of clothes and our cars are... Um, uh, cars and radio are there, so we can get by if we have to. Um, what we've found in the past is they'll, the airlines will let you get away with a bigger carry-on if it's a backpack rather than a roller bag. So we'll usually carry two backpacks, me and my dad, uh, one each, and then if we need to, we'll carry a small roller bag with. Um, but I'll carry my car and all, the, all that stuff in a backpack. Um, usually get, I'll have a, I have backpacks that are big enough for 8 scale and 10 scale. So they work for both. Um, and then for our bags, we use the OGO 9800 bag. Uh, they are a little bit heavier. like the, They almost weigh 15 pounds empty, but they don't break, and they keep your stuff a lot safer, too. So when you get there, the wheels aren't missing. You, you have a reliable bag. Um, and then I'll usually take two bags. And they have for most airlines, you have to be under 50 pounds. So I'll try to spread out everything. And the reason for all the trash bags is um, I'll put all my clothes in clean uh, grocery bags just so it keeps your clothes clean because um, your, your tools and stuff, if something opens up, you want to have your cl clothes clean. And then you can keep them, you can use them for packing also. I, use, I split the clothes up and the tools and parts and everything between the bags to keep everything the right width, or the right uh, weight, sorry. So I'll put like a, my toolbox in one bag because it's, one of the heavier things. And I'll try to put it fairly centralized so it has protection from everything, um, like all the cases. Try to keep everything from breaking. And another thing I do is put a rubber band around everything to keep everything from opening up and then making a mess in your bag. Um, it's just a little bit of safety. So I'll, I'll distribute, try to get equal weights. Like the toolbox is heavy, so I'll put like two parts trays to kind of compensate. I'll put two of these in this bag. Um, and then just kind of keep distributing stuff um, evenly. Like, uh, like this bag, this box isn't all that heavy, so I'll put it in with the, the toolbox. And then I'll go back. I'll use, I like to go back and forth just so you can keep track of your weight better. So I'll put another parts tray in here. And then maybe a Dremel case that's fairly heavy, so it'll be OK with this bag. Um, I'll usually put my main trays in at the bottom, because the bottom's like all plastic and is very protected already, so I don't need clothes around it. Um, but then when you get into the smaller parts trays, I'll put clothes around like these, like one of these trays. I'll put like, try to wrap clothes around it and put it near the front. And then I'll put another, like you can stack with these trays, you can stack a couple together and then I'll put it so it's protected from the soft edges in case the bag, like the, the handling guys aren't the most careful, so they're, you got to pack your stuff fairly well. Um, and we've learned this the hard way from having stuff broken in the past. So if you want to keep all your stuff intact for when you get there, you'll want to do this. And another thing is I'll try to put your clothes, like have a distribute your clothes between the bags equally. Not just the amount of clothes, but have like enough shirts and pants and socks and everything you need in one bag, like equally. So you can, if so one bag gets lost, you still have half your clothes, you can still get by. Um, instead of putting all your, say all your shirts in one bag and all your pants in the other bag. So try to do that and then just get your bag. Once you do this enough, you'll kind of figure out what stuff needs to go where and how much um, stuff you need to figure out. Um, but you'll just keep packing and then Putting clothes in. <clears throat> so this is what we found to be the best, the best way for us anyway to do this. And then I'll put the pit board in last, just to kind of on top, just to keep everything down. Um, and then pit mats in another bag. And the delicate stuff, again, you want to wrap very well with clothes or soft um, item of some sort, like a, a pit mat works, or if you bring your tires, you can wrap them in that.
usually charger boxes and motor boxes are fairly well protected from whatever's inside. Uh, so I don't need to put a lot of packing in them or around them, sorry. Electric's a little bit easier also to try to get everything underweight because you don't need to bring quite so much stuff um, for nitro. I'm going to do a video in a little while of how we pack for nitro and you need to be a little bit more careful with your weight because there is more stuff. You have a starter box, you have pit bags. Um, you just have more heavy stuff basically, so you need to pack carefully. Um, but once you get all this done, you weigh the bag. We have a, a baggage, I guess, scale and you'll, you'll weigh it and make sure it's under 50 so when you get there you don't have to rummage through your bags and try to make your bags the right weight. Um, so that's about it. We, I guess I could pack everything but just run the video on longer and don't need to. So yeah, that's about it. And we're gonna make a nitro video or nitro bag packing video soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.